complete lack of preparation. It's not just the pandemic that's killed people, it is the fact that the healthcare system wasn't readied at all to handle something like this. None of us who are in India at the moment have been untouched by this crisis. I'm Elizabeth Puranam, I am Al Jazeera's India correspondent, and between us, I have never seen so much desperation. We have seen hospitals running out of everything from beds, oxygen, equipment, medicines. Just unprecedented pressure on a poorly funded healthcare system. The most heartbreaking thing about covering the story has been the amount of desperation. One man who I heard long before I saw him and it's because he was crying so much, so loudly. He was begging them to admit his wife who was in the back of an ambulance struggling to breathe and the hospital was full. I have no one else except my wife and child who I've left on the road with an acquaintance. We have seen patients die all over the country because the hospital ran out of oxygen supply. A lot of people have been finding their own oxygen supplies because even if they are getting admitted into hospitals, hospitals have such a shortage of oxygen. This has led to a terrible black market in oxygen with people charging so much for oxygen cylinders, for the gas. And so those are the kinds of scenes of utter desperation that have been playing out. Everyone has been affected. We heard from our friend who said that his father wasn't doing well. He was saying his oxygen level had dropped to 58 and that is an emergency when your level drops so much. I was reporting on this so I knew that there were no hospital beds left in Delhi. Still I was asking around if anyone knew of one. I couldn't find him a bed. So then we were doing everything we can to find him oxygen. He died like so many people have died, not just because they have COVID, but because they couldn't get the care they need, because we couldn't find a hospital bed or oxygen until it was too late. The first and second waves are completely incomparable. We've seen daily infections have been more than 400,000 in the second wave. There was no preparation done for a second wave. The Indian government had allowed millions of people in one day to bathe in the Ganges River for a Hindu festival. It allowed elections in five states where 175 million people were eligible to vote. All of these events have become super spreaders. India is the world's largest vaccine manufacturer. It makes 60% of all the vaccines in the world. It exported 65 million doses before realizing it had a shortage at home. So it's infuriating to watch what's happening. So we have seen different governments, whether it's the central to the state, putting pressure on hospitals, putting pressure on doctors not to talk about what's happening. India's most populous state, Uttar Pradesh, has seen huge shortages of hospital beds and oxygen and people dying because of that. The government there told hospitals not to put up signs asking people not to come because they didn't have any more beds and they didn't have enough oxygen. But it's not possible to silence them. We have seen so many doctors breaking down, talking about how they aren't able to do what they were trained to do. They aren't able to do their jobs. They aren't able to save lives. The first wave of the coronavirus in India last year, it laid bare the country's inequality. But in many ways, this second surge has been the great equaliser. Everyone knows someone who's been affected. It doesn't matter who you are or who you know.